How about a vintage black and white tube television resurrection? And this thing was left for dead somewhere. I forget exactly where this came from. Uh, could have been a desert set or someone might have hooked me up with it. I don't remember one of the TV shops. I have so many of these sets like this of this type around here waiting for their turn to uh, shine again that I lose track. Anyway, we'll start with an analysis. We'll see if it's even worth fixing. I believe I have the glass uh, cover that goes on this thing that, that comes off. So what do we have? It's a looks like it's a silver tone transport table. So it's a silver tone transport table. And just look at the filth of this thing. And no, I didn't roll it out of the dump by the river in a wheelbarrow and put it on my motorcycle and bring it home. I don't know what this thing came out of a shop or something. Is it sitting next to the brake lathe or something in a shop? Look at how filthy this is. I mean, it is gnarly gross. This is interesting. Did it have a remote? Usually you see things like this on sets that had remotes. Or, well, that wouldn't have been an antenna holder because the antennas are right here. It looks like it's been melted. Probably see this better from the other direction. You see it's been melted there. Press to reset. Oh, we have a model number 2112. That's a good thing. That makes fine schematic easy. Chassis number, it's pointing in here. A lot of times Silvertone always had those tags on the chassis. Horizontal hold. Someone really did leave this for dead. Man, this thing is... This thing has been worked. Wow, this is in rough shape. First time I've ever opened a plastic TV up and had termite waste fall out of it. That's a new one. Uh, it, it definitely is a remote set. There's the remote motor. So this was a remote set. I mean, this is... This is rough. The melted spot was above the damper. This is where the melted spot in the case was. This is interesting. This is like a tarp, one of those tarps that, or a plastic bag that disintegrated. Boy, this is... What happened to the relay there? The relay is all malleolated. Look at that. So this must be the remote receiver right here. It looks like it maybe just did one thing maybe just change the channel well wow, it's got a rebuilt tuner in it someone actually pulled the tuner out and sent it to one of those shops and had it rebuilt in this well we gotta start with the CRT if the CRT is no good then we abort and promptly put this into the trash can. Uh, here's the chassis number. You could probably tell who made it by this. Let's see if I can clean that. 
to service tubes and then over here it's at uh, transistor layout for remote control receiver it's got a ceramic transducer looks like our remote control frequency is 39 kilohertz a little bit above the average human hearing range so the chassis number is 456-51822 and that 456 tells you who made it in Canada Simpson Sears Limited are there any Sears's left the one here in Torrance went away, I don't know, not long ago, and I think it was one of the last. It's probably become an Amazon distribution facility next, or housing, low-income housing in the hot part of town. So I'm going to get a CRT tester in this, and uh, we'll see if we move forward. Okay, the propaganda bulb is a 19... AYP4 6.3 volts socket number six. I wonder if I have socket number six here. Oh, look at that. Socket number six. We make lucky happy. Sunshine. Sparkly. Okay, so this should be at 50. We need to set this to 6.3 or thereabouts. Reflecty doodle. 6.3 it is glowing which is a good thing it's not open we don't know if the cathode is open set cutoff well It actually has some emissions. I'll be daggone. Really no cutoff though. I mean, you're supposed to get it to the very first little notch there. And we can't quite do that. Now, it has been cold for who knows how many years. wiggle this around and see but on this tester that is make picture let me get a different uh, tester we'll get another opinion Okay, I've let it sit for about 10 minutes, and I've kind of learned don't let it sit on the test function because that just sits there and burns away what little is left, and it doesn't look like it's changed much. Maybe it's come up a little bit. I don't know if that's flakiness in the tester or the CRT, but it's got a microscopic amount of cutoff. So we'll try this one. We'll get an opinion from this doctor. Just to double check. I mean, HK shorts, G1 shorts, gun balance or cutoff. Same thing. And this one shows better cutoff. Now, what is cutoff? I always get that. For it to be very simplified, it's applying a negative voltage to one of the grids to test the overall performance highs and lows of the CRT. So this should produce a decent picture. So we, knowing, knowing this, we can proceed with this resurrection. I am happy with the results of the tube. Now we could run into a bad flyback, we could run into a bad yoke, or something else, but usually I can get around those for a resurrection just so we can see it live again. 
The next thing I'd like to do is that this is obviously hinged and I'd, I'd like to follow those directions and remove these screws and drop this thing down and so we can inspect all the tubes. Uh, these boards look completely baked. The soldered solders. Oh, there's a crack there. Look at that crack in the board. Did somebody fix that? This is what I'm saying. A, a thorough visual inspection with a, a magnifying headset is always best before you try and power these up. So let me give you a So imagine going to take the tubes out of Mama's TV and take them to the supermarket and test them in the free tester and you push a little bit too hard and crack the board that would and you don't have the capacity to fix it well, there's a tube socket right there like I said probably just pushed on the board a little bit too hard and cracked it anyway we're gonna inspect this real good we're gonna see if there's any traces that run through this obviously there's Ooh, you want battery charged, Mr. Light. Obviously the ground runs through it, and there might be one right here. Okay, so this is just absolutely horrific, like in every way. So this is broken off of here. Uh, this is loose. Um... So the only, well, this screw and that screw are holding it, but yeah, this is how it hinges down. And boy, does that give you limited accessibility to anything. Who, who designed this garbage? This thing, I almost feel like this needs a, a date with the coin-op car wash before I work on it. Why is this tube new? Let's see, what is this? 6AQ5. It's the audio output. I didn't do that. It's this audio output transformer. It's all ripped apart. Someone tried to pull down on this stupid thing. I'm sorry, but this is a bad design. This is... This is a bad design. Okay, uh, I need to... There is no tube chart in the back. So I need to get the schematic. Hopefully I have it. Just photograph it and we'll look at it on the phone. I look up 456-518 in the Sam's online thing and there's nothing there. Uh, I start backing it up so it's 456-51. It's 456-518-22. So I pull out the book and 456 518 uh, there is no 2-2, but it looks like it would be in 601-1. Let me see if I could find the model number. So the model is a 2112, and of course it's 601-1. I just used a good phone to take pictures of the schematic. It's interesting, this is the set that is featured on the front of the SAMs. Looks a little bit different than this one, doesn't it? But this is it and yes 6AQ5 6AQ5 is the right audio output tube so it's weird that that looks like that's been replaced 6AQ5 so I got the whole thing here parts uh, layout this is all the components. 
I got it all here so we can go just use this instead of ruining the paper copy. This one came out a little blurry, didn't it? 13 EM7 and 8 FQ7 is our horizontal multi vibrator. High voltage rectifier is a 1B3. Those are always bad. I wonder where that is. It's probably inside something. We want to check this before we do anything. Let's see what other tubes do we have here? 17 DQ6 and 22 DE4. There's a rare one. I don't think I have a 22 DE4. I cleaned this crack section of the board off and there is in fact one broken trace. It's that one right there and I did check it with a meter and it is in fact open. Uh, the rest doesn't look like there's anything that bridges it except the ground which shouldn't matter because it goes all the way around. The board is also cracked over here. So this thing got hammered. Okay, getting back to our Sears set. I'm going to just jump this open. There's a single open here I found. Um, just jump it with a piece of wire where the crack in the board is. It looks like it's the plate supply for the audio detector tube. So it wouldn't affect anything except no sound. Okay, well, well, I was soldering that. I noticed that right there. The hell is going on with... And that looks like it's the only thing that connects to that wire. Well, as you can see here with the flashlight, hopefully, let me see if I can zoom in because this thing is not easy to work on. There is a resistor right there just floating around. See it there? See there? In fact, yeah, see the resistor right there? the hell is going on with this set? So it looks like we got a 220k resistor here. One side of it's loose and the other side of it's just broken off. God, I haven't even fired this up yet. I think I see why that resistor bridges the crack in the board. So there's the resistor, red, red, yellow, 220K. Okay, so I've noticed that this is this solder is broken. What a basket case, man. Resurrection. You know, the more of this stuff I finger, it's just this board is just bad. I check this one, everything seems solid. Got a 220K resistor here. Um, so I'm inspecting this thing and I more and I pull the wire back and we got another beefy crack here. But that's just all grounds and they just kind of all wrap around. I'm not real worried about that. Um, this thing is, this is a solid state uh, power rectifier. Uh, hot chassis, so it, it it's like a doubler circuit. It's got two solid state diodes here. Um, I have the CRT unplugged to break the filament chain so the tubes will not get hot. And I disconnected the plate cap on the horizontal output. Not that this matters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a 25 watt bulb. Um, this should limit our current for reforming capacitors to 200 milliamps or something. I'm going to assume this is the power switch. Absolutely nothing. Oh, there we go.
So I would suspect that should not be lit at all right now, unless there's a short. That's kind of weird that I pushed on the, uh, I don't know, that every. it's like this thing was dropped. But yeah, that's full brightness. Put this on. It gets just a fraction brighter when I do that. Just a fraction. So, what I would expect this to do with no filament string is I would expect this to discharge the capacitors and then drop off. Maybe I need to go find that phone that had the pictures in it. I'll turn this off while I do that. Okay, so enjoy the reflection. So the power comes in off the line. Like I said, hot chassis set. Um, here's our doubler diodes. And the filament tap comes off before the circuit breaker. So that's sort of interesting. So if I screw this in, we get full brightness. If I push the circuit breaker in, it goes out. Let me put this on. That should, and then I'll push the circuit breaker in. See, it doesn't go out. So, um... So it's like, it's like we have shorted capacitors here or something. Uh, or shorted diodes maybe, maybe one of those diodes is shorted. But without the filaments, we should have virtually no load. This light bulb should not be on. Even if I put a 10 watt lamp in there, a 5 watt lamp, it should only come on until these capacitors charge up. So what's going on here? What I might do is I might put my meter across this and see if it's reforming. Alright, so AC volts here. 15.75. If I connect this. 9 volts. So... I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. We'll see if these are reforming capacitors. This definitely looks like reforming capacitors. Can you imagine if you just plug this thing in, it would just blow the breaker and that would be it. Wow. Okay, it's uh, still climbing. It's um, 336. It's been going for about 10 minutes. I'm going to just let it keep going. I don't feel either of them getting warm, so this is a slow reform. Man, if you just powered this up, it would just be a dead short. And by the way, I don't believe in reforming. You know what? If I was going to use this set, if this set wasn't what it is, I would replace these electrolytic capacitors. I'm not going to screw with this crap right here. All it's going to do is you leave it off for a week, turn it on, they're going to be shorted again. There's no reason, just replace them. You're only talking about, what, 15, 20 bucks in capacitors? It's not worth it. Um, this is just a resurrection. I'm never going to use this set once we get it to work, probably. So that's why I'm not going to do it. But if I was restoring this, I wouldn't reform anything. Just replace them. It's 4 o'clock now. It's been reforming for about 30 minutes. 25 watt bulb. We're at 62 volts. We started at 15. I can tell you that filter right there is warm. I'm going to grab the FLIR and we'll take a look at the thermal. So here we go. Of course the big filter is hot. See the big filter can right there? Hundred and thirteen degrees. There's another filter down here. Uh, there's a couple little warm doodly squeevlers here, isn't there? Like what do we got right here? Where is this? 
Yeah, stick your finger. I guess it's that resistor. It doesn't feel hot. Look over here. We've got some heat here too, don't we? What do we got over here? Oh, the remote unit. Oh, wow. The remote unit's pulling power, but we got something else down in here. Oh no, that's the filter. Okay, that's the, that's the big filter right there. That's the main filter that's getting hot. But yeah, let's see. Is our rem maybe the remote unit is not even on because I don't see any. I don't see any heat here. All the heat is coming from the big filter, and that big filter is hot. So yeah, I mean yeah, that that would be the one to replace if you are going to engage in recapacide. Yeah, I really don't see anything else here. There's a couple resistors. This board here, this is the board we've been working on. And there's a couple warm spots, but nothing... Nothing major. There's one warm spot down here at the bottom. It's mainly just the big filters drawing all that current right there. The main filter capacitor. So it's reforming. It's up to 69 volts now. It's the hotter it gets, the faster it reforms. This is sort of interesting. So I hooked my uh, milliamp meter up to the plate of the horizontal output because I wanted to it's getting ready to fire this thing up and I wanted to measure monitor the plate current and you know I have the filaments disconnected and the time is our light bulb is totally out our voltage is 107 volts it's 435 so it's been a little over an hour for that capacitor to reform to the point where it's not is shorted and all electrolytics do that. They, they have uh, an electrolyte in them, paper, foil, and over time they kind of go dormant or whatever and they short, they internally short. Even if you take a brand new electrolytic out of the box or you leave it in the box, it will need to be reformed or it will go bad from age. But anyway, I was looking at this and there's actually current draw See that? A microscopic amount with the filament out. So that must be what cathode stripping is all about. And we do like stripping, but we don't like cathode stripping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up to a 200 watt bulb here. And we're now at 119 volts. And we're going to, oh, we should probably hook this up. And this will illuminate our filaments. And that lit up a little bit. So we're at 108 volts here. This is kind of the moment of, oh, I hear noise. Here comes our cathode current, or plate current. Uh, that is super excessive, and we're and it's come. Oh boy, rogue! That was uh, yeah. We got an issue. Okay, let's try that again. Maybe I just needed to reform the cathode. That's a joke. But yeah, this should be a hundred milliamps max. Yeah, we, we got issues here. We have issues with the high voltage. 
The first thing I want to do, if I can figure out how to get to it, is I want to get the high voltage rectifier disconnected. Boy, that thing looks roach. Get this thing out of here. Man, that looks baked. Looks don't mean anything, but I mean that, that these these like to go to air. I don't know. A little corrody doodle. So just try and keep that away from everything. It's interesting. The tube chart is printed on the inside of the high voltage can lid. Why? Okay, here we go again. And this time around, I mean, I'm not seeing the drop, the horizontal oscillator. When the horizontal oscillator starts, you usually see it come up. And then on its way up, you'll see a dip. See, I'm not... Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Ooh, we're cooking with gas. Look at that. Look at that beautiful blue glow. That's what you call a gassy tube. Come on. Let's... Oh yeah, we got some fireworks going on in there. Come on. Show me where the big girl is at. You can hear it arcing inside. That's cool. If it burns my meter up, it's not cool, but that's why I'm current limiting with this bulb. See what happens to the bulb when it shorts? You know what? I wouldn't necessarily think this is bad by looking at it. Not that you can look at something and tell, but 17 DQ6. I am not sure if I have this. But this does not look gassy. The the Get the getters are only partially wasted. 17 DQ6. I tested our tubes, and this is our damper tube, and it tested fine, no problem there. And I let it cook to see if the grid leakage came up. Tested our 1B3, it even this one even tests good. I tested the 17 DQ6. This is the one that was sparkling and blue and looks like it had air in it, but the getters are not totally white. No emissions at all. And I have to make a correction to something I said earlier in the video about uh, cathode stripping and this tube passing current when the filament was not heated. And I, I, I got to walk that statement back and assume here we go with the assumptions again that the reason why this tube is passing current is because it's got air in it. I pulled two 17 DQ6s out of my stash. Uh, this one tests pretty strong, really strong, and this one tests kind of weak. So I labeled it as weak with my little junkyard paint marker. So First thing I want to do with this is I want to see if the horizontal oscillator is running. I want to take a look at the, and we'll use the weak tube with the plate disconnected. 
actually first thing I want to do is I want to put the 25 watt bulb back on it and see if those capacitors deformed. Horizontal output tube is out, dampers back in. I put the high voltage rectifier back in, doesn't matter, the filament chain is broken. Uh, it's been sitting about 20 hours. So let's see what happened with that capacitor. Oh, seems like it stayed formed up pretty well. Okay, that's a good thing. I just checked it with the ca capacitor tester and uh, it tests okay as well as that cardboard one down there tested okay. So that's good. It stayed formed up overnight. Okay, I got the scope hooked onto the control grid of the horizontal output. I got the plate disconnected. I'm going to hit bypass here. Um, looking for hors oh there it is okay so what do we got here we got one hell of an offset uh, 88 volts peak to peak 15 kilohertz that looks good Boy, that's a... What the hell? Maybe I'm way too... Uh, let me see here. Position scale, cursors, trigger. Am I having trouble operating a scope right now? The, the squeal is definitely not... There's a hell of an offset there. It's kind of a shitty looking horizontal, but it is there. At least it's there is horizontal drive. I don't think that looks quite right though. They want something that looks like that. And I don't think that was quite what we had here. Well, maybe. It should be a little bit yeah, but it might cut it might dial in when I hook the horizontal output up. Okay, here we go. See if we see a dip where the oscillator starts. We did not see a dip. Ooh, the high voltage just, just came up. They want 130 milliamps maximum on this. Oh. Ooh. I smell Corona. Wow, the horizontal, or the vertical's running slow. Where's the vertical? Right here. Thing looks like it's working so our plate current is acceptable they they have 130 milliamps on the cathode of that tube and let's see if I can show that it's kind of blurry here but it's a hundred it's 130 milliamps right there on the cathode so that's acceptable so this thing looks like it's sort of working with 
just what some circuit board repair and one tube so I think I can get rid of that meter let's see if I'm at a light level here where the camera can sink to the picture you know I'm starting to see a pattern with these sweep tubes kind of going to air and I'm wondering if that's what's going to eventually kind of finish tube sets off or some of the larger power tubes all going to air and becoming unavailable Like no contrast. Is that sinking to that? I don't think so. That's a window circle and it's very, very light. Yeah, it's too bright. I'm gonna have to wait. It's not really visible right now, but it it should. I'm on this. I'm on the staircase, so it should go from black to white over here. And I took this off and I sprayed them with WD-40 because I'm cheap and I don't care about this. And then I was sort of inspecting this because I can't get the staircase, and I was thinking, well, weak signal. And I noticed that if you look down in here, one of the two wires from the twin lead is broken off of the, um, the back of this terminal thing here. So let me see if I can solder that. Okay, even better, even better, I just unplugged it and went into here. And this is a bit risky because this thing is not isolated. This is a hot chassis set. The VG91 is not isolated. So your isolation comes from those two disc capacitors in there. So if something shorts here, we're going to have smoke, but uh, I'm okay. Okay, so uh, there you go. I have the vertical adjusted the best I can get it, which is not great because there's probably some bad capacitors or a weak tube. There's our staircase, that's what I was talking about before and I couldn't get. That's cranking the RF up. This actually, now that that's connected, it's actually working pretty good. That don't look very good. It looks kind of blurry. Uh, this distortion up here could be due to capacitors. It's a lot of fuzziness. It's not a real sharp picture. It's kind of blurry. I wonder if there's a focus adjustment on this. Let me grab the schematic. 
So actually, according to this, we do have a focus pot. I don't know where it is. I'm going to have to try and locate it, but definitely want my crepe erase commercials to be dialed in nice and clear. Okay, so focus is right here. I need something to turn it. definitely makes it a little sharper, doesn't it? Definitely get my crepey race on. Okay, I, I think we're happy here. Let's hook up the let's hook up the digital TV converter box. Always got to say that cuz there always there will always be comments you still have analog TV in your area? No, we have digital TV, but we have a converter box that allows you to watch digital TV on an old analog TV. That way you can really watch your crepey race commercials in full HD. Number one brand here at HSN, number one customer rated. Everything he does is a customer pick, but this is our highest customer rated pan for a reason, nothing sticks. But here's the thing. Or nothing for sticks. For today and only for this show, he has created a three-piece nesting set in the skillet design that everybody wants. That's the go-to pan, whether you are a French-inspired chef, or you're just a busy mom or dad, or you're a lazy cook like I am, and you don't want to have to do any dishes. It's actually a really them. good picture, and it goes... So Super bright. I gotta get the chef out here right away. I mean, it's like, it's like it's like uncomfortably bright, which definitely a hot CRT. Look at how solid the blacks are, and look at how good the whites are. Has free shipping, five flex, and free shipping. But then you're also not a bad res. A big deal that says spring from Quacker Factory. My new favorite category of barefoot dreams is in the show. Um, Not a bad resurrection. I mean, this is crepe-tastic. I'm just using rabbit ears right now, so we're not going to get a lot of uh, good stuff. We're, it doesn't look like we're going to get much of anything. Maybe I should hook this to the real antenna. Vidalva. Women's Air Force Service pilots have just been awarded three days on Vela La Cava, courtesy of the Black Sheep. It's the flour, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of butter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's get a little bit of butter. This is a French thing. The French call this monte au beurre. His 1967 boxing manga was a massive hit with... The audio is a little weird. The audio is a little weird on this. Ooh! Poor TV! ...and the way the scuff marks were on it, or just like the way the scuff marks were on my shirt. And I noticed, like, instantly, you know, she had all white undergarments on. Like, like fentanyl infused cigarettes. See if I can find something good Wait here. For your right to fall. Powerful. And Russia has, even though it had atomic bombs and still has atomic bombs, uh, it, it, uh, didn't fall into that category. But, but at the time, if I'm not mistaken, especially when we look at the era of the 50s and the 60s, before my time, but look at... Happy Smile Sunshine Fantasy Box. So cheesy with the little sparkles. 
Oh yeah. Crank that bass up. The little sparkles. Soft opening. Look at how the audio affects the, uh, the audio is getting into the, that's a bad filter. Somewhere. Probably. 같고, you are getting 34 inch tall stakes. You are looking at a $13 price tag on value pay. The only lean and build muscle. But what if there was a way to tell your body to get back to work and boost your GH levels again? Nugenics GH Boost uses. God, there are so many over the air channels. Starting at $6. Here. There are hundreds, there are like hundreds. For your edification. We had a situation arise on this show. Breaks. Just a little. Each one has got like four to between four and ten sub channels. I put it close to my mouth. This one has twelve or how many? It doesn't even look like it's on the air. Oh, darling, look at the gray animal. QVC, oh, H is it really? HSN, circle. Right, whatever, bear be tied, till I find the holy grail. And I said, said the lonesome. It's hot like it ever is, but. A Hyundai assurance program. Visit us in person at the 60 freeway at Azusa or online at phhyundai.com. <laughs> want to get on that. Goodbye, baby. We'll let the copyright try and work on this for a little bit. I found out that policy start for as little as 35 cents a day. Rates will never increase and coverage won't decrease. Yeah, eight don't work too well. It is a $10,000 bracelet. It is saturated through... There was nothing, uh, you, whatever you got out, if that would. Yeah, it needs work. I am secure on that top set. Damn, how many of these QVC things are there? And five. And in the last two, here is. How did I get from channel 7 to channel 56? Like I said,
what is this just is this just like lottery numbers TV like I said there's probably 200 channels now here in LA but anyway we'll take a look at the glow edge here um, unfortunately you can't see much of it because it's all like packed down inside here just you can see a little bit yeah you can't really see much of the tube there's our uh, damper and our horizontal output it looks like that one might be glowing a little blue on the inside also It almost looks like that sucker's red plating. Does that look like that's red plating? Anyway, there's an interesting resurrection, I think. Um, radar, satellite, loop, and forecast. There's a converter box right there. Um, interesting resurrection, interesting reforming those capacitors. They actually kind of, oh, this has a, a neon bulb for the uh, channel display. So the capacitors can be reformed. Now, if I was going to clean this up and fully restore it, which I'm probably not because I have some black and whites like this that are brand new in the box that have never been opened. But if I was going to, I would... I would recap it. There's no doubt. There's no reason, there would be no reason not to recap it. I mean, yeah, the caps are reformed, but they're no good. Working pretty damn good for being left for dead. Let's see, this is a 1988 Ford Ranger, 2.9 liter. And I want to pull the ECU out of this car and check the electrolytic capacitors in it. It seems like the capacitors are going bad and... Uh, a lot of 80s and 90s cars now both domestic and Japanese <clears throat> I don't drive this thing hardly at all anymore used to use it to go get TVs fairly often but I've kinda like filled up on TVs um, <clears throat> always disconnect your battery if it's a vehicle you don't use a lot your battery will last forever like that Usually, sometimes, the, I guess the first step here is to actually find where they hid the ECU. And a lot of times on these Fords, they're sticking through the firewall right here. But I don't see it in this one. Of course, there aren't a lot of 80s cars around. So it looks like it's in here, passenger side kick panel. On the full-size trucks, it's definitely sticking through the firewall. So let me get this open. And there it is. I almost wonder if it's been tampered with before because it looks like it's got a self-tapping screw here and these usually had a 5.5 millimeter bolt. Yeah, this is definitely not original. Auto manufacturers do not use this. On these, it's just a single 10 millimeter bolt that gets the connector out. Looks like it's been in here a little bit. I think we've owned this truck at least 12 years or maybe more so it's 5.5 millimeter bolts to get it open let's get it open and check the caps a correction here this is actually a four millimeter and they're tight okay this ECU this specific one only has one electrolytic right there and it does look like it's starting to seep the leads underneath are not bright and shiny they're a, like a dull corroded color like you look at the rest of these solder joints 
under the conformal coating they're all bright and shiny now a lot of the the full-size trucks and other vehicles they'll have one capacitor here one here and i think one back here somewhere the one that's right here looking at the ec like that is always the one that leaks and eats the traces and so does this one and this one but these are they make several different styles of these so i'm going to test this with the capacitor wizard and then we'll probably preemptively change that just because I'm in here but this is all original usually when you get a refurbished ECU the first thing they do is change the capacitors in fact that's probably the only thing they do this is got some surface mount stuff